what ways are there for people to actually optimize their campaigns? As far as like mechanically, like what, I, there's oh, right. a few ways, like if we're talking about like mechanically or if we're talking about like best practices, uh, mechanically, there's several different ways. You can go right into Ad Console. Um, if you only have a few campaigns, this is probably fine. You gotta click through a lot of your stuff to, to really make any changes. Um, that's fine if you have a few campaigns. The next option would be like your bulk operations. So this is where you can download a spreadsheet of all your different campaigns, make changes in bulk. Uh, if you're really comfortable with spreadsheets, this is probably okay. Um, hmm. Depending on what you're trying to do, you might need to get into like pivot tables and things like that. You can get fairly advanced depending on the sort of data you're trying to analyze. And I know a lot of people do have an aversion to spreadsheets. Um, and there's even platforms like KDP that don't have bulk operations as an option. So their only option is pretty much Ad Console, which um, does have its limitations or it's just the way it's laid out. There's a lot of clicking. And then there's tools like Merchjar where uh, it simplifies that process or even automates a lot of those tedious uh -huh. tasks that have to be done. Um, if we're talking about best practices, which um, I don't know if, which one you're referring to, but I'll just, I'll just touch on both. Um, probably one of the best things you should do as far as like best practice for like, how do I optimize my campaign the best? The first thing you should do is set a target ACOS. So ACOS is your advertising cost of sale. It basically tells you how profitable your ads are. Um, and without a target, you're sort of just flying blind but having a target a cost it's it's your it's sort of a barometer to how well your ads are doing if they're um below or we'll start if they're well above your a cost is well above what your target is they're really unprofitable they're not performing well mm -hmm. that gives you information on um what you need to do typically lowering bids lowering budgets and if it's too low so let's say you have an a cost of 25 percent and your a cost is only 10 or 15 percent they're performing really well and you would think it's like well they're overperforming it's like actually you're probably leaving money on the table you're under investing so that's another direction um you want to get it just right to that target a cost but that's why you're setting a target a cost hmm. first so that it's giving you direction and what to do um so even if it's too low you can invest more in those ads to get more sales increase your ranking even more than just taking profit so it, that's the first step is determining what your target a cost is for anybody mm. new, I recommend a break-even ACOS. Um, just unprofitable ads. Not you're not losing money. You're not making money. You're just um, get it breaking even on them. To and and this is really just to increase. For one, get sales history with your campaigns. Uh, get sales history with your product to lead to more reviews and most importantly, increase your ranking. Um, to increase organic sales. Most of the sales come at the top of the ranking. So you want to climb up the ladder as yeah. much as possible. What What is that roughly for like a 1999 shirt, the A cost? I don't know. After they changed the pricing, I think that's around 24%. I've moved my pricing up to twenty one ninety nine for my um, sell bigger sellers, which is I think 28% um, yeah. break even A cost. Um, and depending on the, the ACOS is, is again, sort of what your goal is. Again, for most new people break even, um, for some of my best sellers, my target ACOS is even higher than what my break even ACOS is, especially if I'm like trying to steal sales from my direct competitors, I'm willing to lose money on those ads to take sales for them, for example. Uh, yeah. So it's really more of what your goal is. And as your product matures, you already have tons of reviews, maybe you can start to lower that target A cost to become directly profitable with your ads. But for me, that's not really the, the goal of advertising um, to be profitable with ads specific. It's more of looking at it as a holistic picture. Okay, okay. And any any other practices, like specific things that you do in the ad console to, to optimize rather than just lowering and upping bids? That's going to be your primary. You, you have so many levers, right? That you can mm -hmm. adjust your bids with. You're optimizing your bids is going to be your primary one. Um, mm -hmm. I will say that one of the best best practices for optimizing your bids do it on a regular basis. One of the, one of the things that like ads are not set it and forget it. You can't just set a bid and expect that to always work. There's it's always changing on a daily basis. Even um, worst case, I'd say once a week, you should be going through and optimizing all of your bids, just making those small adjustments based on 
what the current performance is versus what your target performance is. So again, that's like, you know, if it's hot, your ACOS is high, I'm gonna lower the bid a little bit. And mm -hmm. it's making small adjustments at a time. It's not making 50% drastic changes. Um, okay. I prefer daily changes of two, 3% at a time. If this is easy, if you're using a tool um, to make that simpler, you're automating that function. If you're not, you're doing it manually, I'd say once a week uh, with no more than a 10, 15% adjustment at a time. Um, that's going to be your primary. Otherwise, like those campaign structures I was referring to earlier, um, setting up those sorts of campaign structures and um, moving those keywords along. This is again, a lot of manual work, but this is, that's the, that's the work with Amazon ads. There's always something more you can do. Just one thing there, when you when you say worst case, once a week, you look at your data and you make adjustments, are you looking at the past seven days performance then? Or are you looking at longer time frames? This really depends on how much data you, you have to work with. Yeah. So if you don't have the data within seven days, especially if these are new campaigns, or you, know, you only have like one order or two orders a month, you can't really look at the last seven days because you don't have enough data. So the, the date range is really going to be, be more of a function on how much data you have. So if you have something that's selling all the time, you're getting four or five, six orders a week from your ads, last seven days is great. I wanna have at least two points of data, which ACOS is my primary metric that I'm looking at when it comes to bid adjustments. Uh, I wanna have at least two orders to you know, de determine what that ACOS is. And the more data, the better. So if you don't have at least that, you need to look at a larger date range. You may need to look at 60 days if your ads aren't mm. spending a ton to get those orders and clicks. Um, so so the more, essentially, the more sales you're getting with ads, the shorter the time frame can be where you, where you look at data. If you're not yes. getting any sales, you have to go 30 days, two months, whatever. Yeah, you um, really have to go back. But ideally, you do want to be able to use as short of a date range as possible because that's going to be the most recent, most relevant data. Again, if, you, if yeah. the data do, isn't there, uh, you, you have to look at a longer data range. That's yeah. another advantage of spending more and being more aggressive in your ads is you get more data to work with. And that's all Amazon advertising is, is using the data that you're investing in and using that to make decisions. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. So you mentioned Merge Jar there as a way to automate that process or make it easier. Mm -hmm. So um, for people who don't know Merge Jar and what it does, how how does it actually help people? Okay. So, I mean, as Amazon sellers, we have a lot to juggle, right? And uh, as the, the advertising I've talked about, doing effective advertising is just a massive chore. So, Mershar simplifies the advertising process. We automate a lot of these tedious tasks so that you have more time to focus on what really matters to you. Um, and those tasks are going to be things like the bid adjustments. It's going to make the bid adjustments for you based on the data that you have. So even like date ranges, if you're going to go into ad console and you have to constantly change date ranges, or even worse, if you're using bulk operations, where you actually have to generate the report for each different date range, that takes a lot of time where Merchart handles all that for you. It's gonna use shorter date ranges and look at shorter windows of time if you have the data available. If you don't, it's gonna back that up to 14 days or 30 days. And then there's different adjustments you can do with that. As far as like the campaign structures, I've talked about moving those keywords from one campaign to another. It's hugely time consuming to do manually. It's super important. So it's something you need to be doing, uh, but it handles that whole process for you as well, as well as the negation side of things too. So when you have search terms that are getting clicks, draining your budget and not converting into sales, it's going to negate those automatically for you. So your budget so goes further. So like another way of optimizing then. Um, so if I get that right, Merge Jar integrates with your ads console and it can literally like move keywords around between campaigns. Yeah, exactly. We use the Amazon advertising API. So all of your advertising data syncs. Um, so there's automations like that that handle those adjustments that'll pause keywords or campaigns that aren't performing. And all of it's customizable too. Um, you can set whatever parameters you, you want to have. Um, with the automation so it's it's all completely tailored to what your goals are especially for more advanced sellers that have specific functions or mm -hmm. data that they look at and the other side of it too is just we've streamlined how easy it is to make changes to your bids so you can see all of your keywords in one table and make 
changes to every single keyword in one go. You don't have to use spreadsheets or for like uh, our merch on demand or KDP sellers that have a huge portfolio. So maybe they're taking advantage of lottery campaigns that you might have thousands and thousands of ASINs to listen to those. Ad console only lets you add a thousand ads at a time to a single ad, ad group. If you got 500,000 ASINs you're trying mm. to list, if you know, you're know you fortunate to be in some of those higher tiers and have that problem, that can be a really tedious time, time issue. We have a function where you can add hundreds of thousands of ASINs to multiple ad groups in a couple clicks, for example. Oh, wow. So there's just a lot of time-saving tools. The whole goal of Mershar is to save time so you can focus on what matters to you, whether that's uh, creating new products or even just achieving some work-life balance and spending more time with yeah. the family. It's it's taking out that tedious portion of Amazon ads that is super important. You need to do it. You gotta stay on top of it because Amazon ads is changing. You always have new competitors. The bids uh, change of what works, what doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the whole goal is just saving time, save hours per month um, and put it, it towards the, I'm guessing stuff. it makes the it makes the data easier to understand as well because they, like you said before, the ads console is not very great as we yeah, know. Yeah, it's, it's it is organized differently from a, a data perspective. So a lot of our users find it a lot easier to digest and get an overview. We have uh, even custom dashboards you can set up so you can actually again tailor the information to exactly what you need at the time you need it. It's a bit like it, it sounds to me like pretty much just for ads, you know make the dashboard prettier, make things easier, bulk actions. And you actually solved one of my uh, later questions there. Someone in the in my Discord server asked, is there another way to export ASINs in bulk for a lottery campaign because of that stupid limit of a thousand? So that's really cool that you have that function because, yeah, I've got so many ASINs. I would like to put them all into a campaign, but I would never do it manually. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, it's, it is tedious. And that's, I mean, it's a lot of the... the the functions and features we've built in the Mershar is because of my own frustrations. It's it's why I started Mershar in, in the first place is there was no solution out there that worked for the the issues that we as Mersh sellers have. And one of it's just yeah. scale. We're on a just completely different scale than almost any other Amazon seller that's not at an enterprise level. No other seller has uh, thousands of listings, let alone tens of thousands or even into the millions at the higher tiers. It's just on a, a different level for that. And as far as like the exporting ASINs, um, we even have a Chrome extension as well to pull all of your merch on demand products to get those into uh, an easy list to import into the, and all the ad groups that you need. So it's a lot, it makes lottery campaigns a lot easier to get spun up and start testing because lottery campaigns are, are fantastic, uh, especially for new sellers. It's probably the first campaign I would start if you have you know, a, a portfolio of at least a couple dozen products. If you enjoyed that clip, then click here to watch the full episode of Print On Demand Wisdom.